matter what level of mastery you achieve in this business, there's no such thing as perfection. Every process is going to have its strengths and its weaknesses. It's understanding these different elements that allow us to achieve success and be excellent in all of our different endeavors. Stefan here with All Omega Print Supply. In today's video, we're going to be running sort of a clinic on common issues and occurrences that can happen with direct-to-film printing. Now before we dive into it, we have noticed a lot of our viewers are coming from non-subscribers. So if you are on the list already, thank you. But if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. If there are any questions on any of the issues that we're going over in today's video, you can leave that in the comment section down below. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, now let's talk about color accuracy, meaning our printed transfer is not matching the color scheme that you designed in your software. Now, what could be some of the causes of this? Well, firstly, it could be the film itself. Hot peel films will typically have more of a release layer coating and less of an ink absorbing layer coating. Whereas a cold peel film will have more of that ink absorbing layer coating and less of the release layer, making typically cold peel a safer performing bet. Now, another resolution could be in the RIP software itself. You do want to work with a reputable developer that has a specific printing profile for your machine, for your ink, and for the film itself. For example, the DTF Station Prestige line of direct-to-film printers are all powered by Catlin Digital Factory V10, and they have their own unique printing cues and environments. Now, if you're running a hybrid system like the Epson F2100 or the Epson F3070, Cathar is going to be the best way to go. Thoroughly tested and color profiled environments for direct-to-film printing excellence. All right, now let's talk about dye migration. This can be a common occurrence with direct-to-film printing or really any sort of heat transfer printing in general. Now, if you notice on this transfer here, you can actually see some of the red showing through what should be a normal rich white. Whereas this side over here is what the transfer should look like. Now this can happen when you're working with dyed materials such as red or synthetics or polyesters, camouflage prints. When they're heated above 265 degrees Fahrenheit, it can actually sublimate the transfer or print itself and result in this dye migration we're seeing here. Now, how do we resolve this? Now, one way is adjusting your white ink layer settings in your RIP software. With the right amount of white ink, you should be able to get a nice rich transfer there that blocks out any of that dye migration from the fabric. Now, if you're still encountering this sort of issue with your transfers, another easy fix is gonna be black DTF hot melting powder. Similar to how white powder will act as a bonding agent for your transfers to all your different materials, what makes the black DTF powder different is this will serve as a natural dye migration blocker, very effective in preserving the actual color accuracy of all of our transfers. Now it is also worth noting that the DTF printers from Prestige and the XL2 and the L2, they have white ink layer customization abilities, meaning you would not need to switch over powder and simple adjustments in the RIP software can fix this issue. All right, now what about static? If you're a directed film printer, chances are you've encountered this once or twice in your production or manufacturing process. Now static can result as an electrical charge on the DTF film itself or through a heat exchange, as well as friction in the machine or in the actual packaging. Now, how do we resolve this? Well, firstly, the proper film that has an even coating of the anti-static layer will give you nice clear images without any kind of powder around the actual print. Now, if you are experiencing static in your environment or a lesser DTF film that has an anti-static layer that was not properly applied, you can actually get little bits of powder that'll transfer around your images and it'll appear as little dots not what you want for your designs. Now it is worth mentioning all DTF films are prepared differently, but we found in our experience that the STS Inc's cold peel film has been super spectacular as far as its anti-static layer coating and I've never really encountered any sort of issue with powder around your printed images. Humidity and temperature can also play a part in the powder retention around your environment and let's dive into those in a moment. All right, now let's talk about humidity for a moment. We're referring to the moisture in the air or the lack thereof. Now, if your moisture and humidity is too low, this could create headaches for your DTF printer. We're talking about clogged nozzles, banding. Basically, the machine's gonna feel like it's drying out. Now, if our humidity levels are too high, well, that's when we could experience powder accumulating around our graphics when we transfer our DTF prints. Not what you want. Now, how do we resolve these humidity-related issues? Climate control is always gonna be your very best friend, and this will be through the use of either a humidifier or a dehumidifier. Ideally, you wanna maintain a humidity level between 40 and 60% for your powder, film, and printer to all be in a working environment. All right, now let's talk about high heat warnings, temperature. Now, you can experience high heat issues with virtually any electronic, and your direct-to-film printer is no exception. Now, how do we resolve this? These issues will typically come from not having the ideal location for your direct-to-film printing equipment, meaning you're running out of your hot garage, maybe a patio, summertime basement, now the fix for this is typically gonna be climate control. 
you want to operate with a temperature above 50 degrees and below 80 degrees Fahrenheit to have not only your DTF printer happy, but also your powder and film all working together. We hope for this video to serve as a map on your direct-to-film journey, and may you never lose your way. However, if you do get lost, just remember, you're always right here. If you do have any questions on anything we've gone over in today's video, go ahead and leave those in the comment section down below. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. My name is Estevan. We are All American Print Supply. We'll see you on the next one.